Hi, welcome back to my channel, Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today I'm here to show off some of my first edition books. And I know my first edition book collection, book haul, are the ones I do the most, but I have more first editions than vintage books or Folio Society or whatever. But anyway, so today is all about first editions. And just going to get right to it. So I am starting with a paperback, and first editions, like... 98% of the time or something are hard covers. And now, so this one is a first edition paperback, but it's not a true first edition because a true first edition would be the hardcover edition. But to get right to it, it is a scanner darkly. And this is from the seventies. So this book is from 1977. And so this is the first edition paperback. I did not get the first edi edition hardcover because one, they're more expensive and so I don't know, maybe I'll save up to buy a first edition of this one. But I don't know, I also don't love the cover. I'll post an image for it. But, so yeah, I just, I love this cover better for one. And yeah, the hard covers are just more expensive, which Philip K. Dick, like any first editions of his books are super expensive, especially do androids dream of, of electric, do androids dream of electric sheep. First editions of that book are thousands of dollars or like over a thousand dollars. I still don't own that one. I want to, but I'm waiting to find an edition that is interesting or special and that excites me in some way and that isn't crazy expensive. So that might be a bit of a process and I haven't found the right one yet. Anyway, this is Philip K. Dick, A Scanner Darkly. I covered this on my podcast, comparing it with the movie starring Keanu Reeves and Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, Winona Ryder. I really loved this book. Philip K. Dick is known for writing, you know, sci-fi trippy stuff. And this one is sci-fi, but it's like sci-fi mixed with weird trippy drug stuff because the character is on drugs and they're making him go kind of crazy while living in this sci-fi world. And if you like books that, like, this was like such an immersive book. Like, I felt like I was going crazy <laughs> as I read this book. And I love it when a book can do that. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, you should check this out. There are some like upsetting stories in here about what people while on drugs have done or what people addicted to drugs will do kind of a thing. But so just be warned about that. But yeah, I love this book. It It's not a lighthearted read. <laughs> like it's a little depressing, but it is so good and I really love it. So highly recommend. And yeah, this is my first paperback edition. Up next is another book I've covered on the podcast, and that is Q&A by Vicka Swar Swarup. And now this one, the movie, is titled Slumdog Millionaire, which everybody has heard of, but the book is called Q&A. And I, I didn't love this book. In my podcast for it, I did say that I like the book ultimately better than the movie. The movie is still good, but but yeah, so this book wasn't like the best one ever, <laughs> but I did enjoy it. And if you like the movie, highly recommend the book because if you like that, you will probably like this one as well. And the questions and the situations are different from book to movie, but it's the same premise where he's on a TV show and events from his past help him know the answers. But it's just the events and the questions and the answers are different from book to movie. So if you've seen the movie and enjoyed it, You'll enjoy this book and it'll still be different enough, you know? And the ending has a bit of a twist that I had not expected and that was one reason why I liked the book better is because it had like this twist ending that I had not seen coming. So yeah, this is a good one and I will show that it is a first edition so you guys know I'm not lying. So there that is. First editions, you know they're a first edition when they have a one in the number line. Some of them will say first edition but it's a lie and it's not. It's a later printing of the first edition. And I actually made the mistake in my first first editions video, I showed my edition of Gone Girl. And Gone Girl, it says first edition on that page, but it's a lie because my copy is the 19th printing of the first edition. So even if it says first edition, if it doesn't have a one in that number line, then it's not the true first edition. And that's for later books like Older books are different as far as knowing whether it's a first edition or not, but but yeah, anyway, so when it has a one in that number line is how you know it's a first edition, and true first editions with that one are the valuable ones. If it's like 
like I said, if it's a later printing of the first edition, it just doesn't have much value to it. But anyway, and I'm now realizing that all of these books I'm covering in today's video are ones that I have all covered on my podcast. So if you want to hear an in-depth review for them and how they compare to the movie, you can check out my podcast why the book wins on any podcasting platform and you can see all the episodes I have. I also, my website has the search bar. So if you go to whythebookwins.com, you can search one of these books and find it more easily. And I have links to the podcast and YouTube videos if they have a YouTube video, not all of them do. But anyway, so my next one, I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. And this one came out 2012. So this came out in 2016. So it's a first edition, but it's not that old, obviously. Now this one, I did cover it on my podcast and I was actually re-listening to my episode for that. And I don't talk about it very highly in some ways, but that's because it is like a, a heavy book and it, yeah, like it made me feel kind of depressed. And so the two days after I finished it kind of, or while I was reading it, I just felt kind of down. And so that made me, you know, maybe not say the highest, give the highest remarks to it. But I also hadn't gone into it expecting that. Like, I want to read this a second time and see how it affects me. Because now that I know going into it what to expect, maybe I'll, it won't feel as heavy as it is. But it is, it's a heavy book in some ways. And it's very psychological and intellectual, like the conversations the main two characters have are ones that, like, they're just really interesting. And so I think this one would be good to reread because there's just so much to think about and what the characters say to each other, you know? But yeah, so even though in my podcast I made it seem like I wasn't the biggest fan of this, I, yeah, it's a great story, very well written. Yeah, and it's really unsettling, too. And there's a part near the end where, it, like, it gets kind of scary. But, yeah, there's just so much to this book. And for the most part, I would recommend it. I think it's good to go into it knowing, like, it's going to be a little depressing. And so if you have struggled with depression in the past, then just be aware of that. And you can, like, decide if you think it's worth it to read this book. That could possibly trigger that depression. But anyway, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Up next is a first edition. It's a library copy, a former library copy. And so it has these library tags, which isn't ideal, but it is my first edition of Ghetto Cowboy by G. Neary. I think his name is Gary or Greg Neary. But this one was great. And this one is actually like a YA novel, I guess. It's for like 10 and up. And I would highly recommend it. If you have kids that are 10 and older, they should definitely read this book. It's it's a really, I mean, it was a quick read for me as an adult, but I think it covers some topics that it's good for kids to read about and it can help bring up that conversation. And it's also just a very kid-friendly book and different lessons are taught in this book in a way that I think is very digestible for a child. And it also has illustrations so here is one and I'll show you another because they're really beautiful illustrations. Let's see. Like that. And so as you can tell by these pictures and by the cover, it is a boy who is sent to live with his dad and his dad is a cowboy in Philadelphia, an urban cowboy. And so he learns, yeah, it's about like taking responsibility for things outside yourself. And it's based on real Philadelphia urban cowboys. And it's really cool to read about because they help kids stay off the streets, essentially, and get them involved in something positive and being part of a community, you know? So yeah, so this was a really good book. I would recommend it for children and adults alike. And again, if the movie is called Concrete Cowboy, so if you want, you can check out my podcast where I compare the two. The movie chose to take a more adult stance where, like I said, this book is aimed towards children. But, but yeah, my first edition copy of... Ghetto Cowboy. Up next is Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. Lehane, Le I think that's how you say it. Um, and I will show you that it's a first edition. There was actually an edition on eBay that was a first edition and signed, and it wasn't even that expensive. But 
I don't know. I've been, I ended up going with the cheaper one anyway that wasn't signed. But it is a first edition, and there we have it. And I have, for my podcast, I have covered three different Lahane books. I've covered this, Mystic River, and The Drop. And this one has been my favorite, so this is the one I chose to buy. I may add Mystic River at some point. The Drop, I wasn't a big fan of, so I don't think I will own that. I don't believe in owning every book I've ever read. Like, if I didn't like it, then why would I have it on my bookshelf? Because I know there's people where... I mean, I get sometimes they buy a book before they read it, they decide they don't like it, but they're like, well, I own it anyway already, so I'll just keep it. I don't know. Like, if you didn't like the book, then I don't think it's worth keeping. I think it should be donated, you know? Anyway, that's just my personal opinion. So I don't think I would own the drop, but Shutter Island, I loved. I compared it with the movie. The movie is also fantastic. Yeah, this is a great one. It's um, like a thriller mystery. And of course, it has, you know, some surprising twists and turns, which at this point, the movie came out 10 years ago now. So, and it had a pretty famous twist. And so I am pretty sure everybody already knows the big reveal. But even if you know the reveal, this book was really enjoyable. And because I knew the reveal, I was able to like notice all these clues leading up to it that I wouldn't have caught had I not known what to look for. So yeah, highly recommend. And Lahane is a great author. So I, you know, I've read three of his books. I plan on covering Gone, Baby Gone as well. So yeah, I, he's an author I would recommend and he's a good writer and his books are always very gripping and on the edge of your seat kind of a thing. So yeah, Shutter Island, really like this one. And this is gonna end up being a shorter video because I am on to my last book now and it is Never Let Me Go by Kazao Ishiguru. And this is the first American edition. Ishiguru is British. So I would love to get the UK first edition, but those ones are more expensive. But down the road, I would like to still buy it nonetheless. But yeah, so this is the first American edition, which is fine. But this one, this was a great book. I want to read Remains of the Day as well. And I'd like to buy that one too, because I'm sure I'll like it. But so yeah, but never let me go. It, it has a movie, and so if you want to hear me talk about it in depth, go check out that podcast for it. But this one is like placed in a futuristic world, but that is not the focus of the book, really. So it's, even though it's placed in like a sci-fi world, I wouldn't consider it a sci-fi book. But it is about people who are clones. Yeah, I don't want to, it's hard to talk about this one without giving the spoilers because I loved the ending of this book and there are people that have complained about the ending, but I thought it was perfect and in my podcast I discuss why. Yeah, it's told through the perspective of one girl through different, like three different stages in her life. Yeah, it's really good. It's more of like, um, like a character analysis or something. I don't know. More so than, like I said, it's not sci-fi, even though it's placed in a sci-fi world. So it's more of just like a character analysis, I guess. And kind of a romance too, and just about the different relationships between friends and romantic relationships. And yeah, I don't want to give too much away. So I will just say that I highly recommend it. And Ishiguro is a fantastic author and I'm really looking forward to reading Remains of the Day, which I have never read. And yeah, that wraps it up for today's video, which I mean, I covered a fair amount of books, but the video ended up being a little shorter, but that's okay, right? Not every video has to be long. But I hope you enjoyed today's book haul, book collection video. And I do these every Sunday. And like I said, I have, or I think I said this earlier, maybe not, but I have vintage books and I have special edition books, specifically Easton Press and Folio Society. And so I will be, yeah, showing off these different editions and different books I have. And I like having unique books. You know, it's not like, oh, check out these paperbacks that I bought that aren't anything special, which now I sound like I'm like hating on people who just have a normal book collection, but I like owning books that are more interesting and special and more valuable and antiques and special editions like Folio Society. Man, I am set obsessed with their books. I only have three right now and I bought them all secondhand. But on their website, they have some beautiful ones specifically. There are new ones for Dracula and Jane Eyre and Master and Margarita. I would love to buy, but they're more expensive, so I'm just kind of waiting. 
But yeah, anyway, so if you're into these like unique editions, definitely subscribe to my channel. And every Sunday I show off part of my collection. And once we move into a permanent residence, I will set up a bookshelf in the background and you'll be able to see my actual books behind me. So I'm really excited to do that. But yeah, subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all these changes and I can share my book collection with you. I also do book first movie comparisons and that's something I do weekly, post those on Wednesdays and it's also a podcast. But yeah, anyway, subscribe to my channel, comment down below if any of these books have piqued your interest or if you've read any of them, I would love to know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.